Live from the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream. Good morning, I was trying on Todd's uh, jeweled glasses and I can't see anymore. Ooh, it's the Headless Horseman. Give me the glasses. Yeah, really? Can you be any dumber? It's <laughs> <sighs> pretty much it. You know, ironically, that actually doesn't look too bad. <laughs> really? How long can you wear those? I can't breathe. Yeah, maybe take it. <laughs> and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is our big special effect for the day. Happy Halloween. You Thanks for watching. Yeah, we'll see you later. That's all that. No, we're kidding. Okay, there's so many things today. Number one. The scariest spooky spot I've ever filmed along the Wasatch Front Wire. Yeah. Personal experience. Speed carving yeah. guide with Todd and Zoe. Yeah. Um, we've also got a great injustice in the city, and it's a small group that's struggling to save their community from a big corporate real estate right. takeover, and you can and actually help them. And a kid put stuff up his nose. Who saw that coming? And they got it out. It's a happy ending. Yay! Yeah. Okay, did you see this? But maybe it's not. <laughs> Woo! Sorry. Are you I'm even conscious. the slightest bit embarrassed? No, right look at me. I, <laughs> I'm far beyond that. I'm, you know, I, I really feel like you should be embarrassed right now. I think it's not. No, no, no. You, you should really All be right, embarrassed so, right so, now. Um, Did you see this thing at uh, the World Series game? Yeah. Can I explain? Explain it? this, because this is like a big deal. People are just were outraged. Well, I would be. Um, the tired thing. Okay, so. Basically, what happened is, I can't find it. Um, basically, what happened is, uh, they, they show a guy take a ball away from a woman. Well, no, it's one of the foul balls in this woman's stance. No, she, it's a home run. A home run it's ball. So, and she can't who's telling the story? <laughs> you didn't have the story, so I was going to tell it. So they show a guy, and he's ripping the ball out of someone's hand, and he throws it back on the field, which is tradition. I don't think that that should be You don't tradition. keep the other team's ball with a home run. I would have been excited. And there were so many home runs. It was it, They set a record. And uh, so all you see is them rip it out of her hand and throw it back on the field. And there was most, massive booze, though, and everyone was like, how could you have done this? Well, most of the crowd was like, yeah. And then the other part was like, hey. And so... Uh, you stink. How could you do that? So basically what happened is uh, they had to explain their in-laws. Yeah, it was her brother-in-law. Brother-in-law. And... <laughs> And the reason she was pissed off is because she wanted to be the one to throw it back on the field. She's like, you suck! That was right, my ball! Right. So they, they stop harassing him because evidently, like, at work or something? Yeah, like, people were really mad. And they were going, like, like, really oh, mad you're, bu you're bullying someone. Well, it, it, from the video, it did kind of look like he was the jerk who was ripping the ball away from this woman who was right. like, I have the ball. It could only be worse if it was a kid. Because you've seen those and then videos push him down, all yeah. the time. Where, I know, where an adult knocks the kid over to get the ball. So horrible. So right. horrible. Oh, speaking of that. By the way, if you are exhausted, maybe you've been staying up late to watch the games. Yeah. We're pathetic because when you get up at 4.30, you can only stay up this much. And then you just hope nothing interesting <laughs> happens after that because you're unconscious. Yeah, so, so basically what they've done is the uh, baseball commission has written an excuse note for you to take to work. And you can print it off. And um, do we have a shot of that? If you give me that copy over there, I can read it while you do it. Okay, here you go. Okay, but we should have a shot of that. All right, guys. go ahead and read it. Uh, here is the excuse note, and it's got the MLB like nice logo on it. It's very official. Right. And it says, it we, says, we've got you fans. It says, please excuse blank from work school general activities on Monday, October 30th, as he, she, they are emotionally recovering <laughs> from Game 5 of the World Series. It continues... Postseason baseball is insane. That's basically all you need to know. Things are nuts. We all need an off day. Right. Yours truly, baseball Twitter. See? You should I think get if up. We could just cross out the date. We could maybe carry that one over for today. I think they kind of know game five means something, though. You know, it also says World Series. There's a lot of emotional excess still in the air. So. I think so. I think that's I a good idea. Funny. All right, while well, we're talking sports, and this is very loosely defined as sports, right. but Cosmo. Now, do you remember we did Cosmo or Epic? Mascot. mascot down from BYU. Yeah, boy, he can dance. And he was doing the moves. Let's I mean, just epic dance moves. He is. Let's, uh, and now he's got a challenge. It's a dance off. No way. It's like the 80s movies. This is so cool. Do we have Cosmo? 
Oh, oh no. This, this is the, this is the, the other contender. Guy. It's the Oregon Duck. And he's saying that he's a much better dancer than Cosmo. Not with what? those not with those web feet, honey. It's just what? not right. Cosmo but, so much So they better. are gonna be they're gonna be apparently doing the big dance off. Now, once again though, that's very sweet, Duck, but take a look at Cosmo and his epic yeah. moves. Yeah, this is how you do it. Look at this. He's he's owning this. Look at the hip action. There's no way the duck's gonna be able to beat that. I'm sorry, it's not gonna happen. That actually really is kind of adorable. Yeah, he's actually really good, <laughs> really right? It's good. So anyway, I, I just pictured this as like one of those needs, epic montages of them yeah. both like working out and yeah. running. He needs long hair though. And he needs look, slabs of meat. Because the girls all flip it around when they're dancing. He doesn't like need, that seat. Yeah, but he's got the tail. Oh, you're right. right? You can have all the flipping right. hair you want, but Cosmo has the tail. There you go. All right. right. So we will the keep, duck. Because we're such a crack Please. news team, we'll keep a very close watch on that for you and let you know when it happens. You know, the term has been thrown around it's for a long time, the dark web. And a lot of people don't know what that is. And there, there is... You, you, you and you, frankly, you really shouldn't. And it's interesting because I've just barely started seeing like all the credit reporting agencies going, we run a, we want to check on you through the dark web. So right. it's like, no, there's no way you really can do that. But that's okay. One of the reasons they call it the dark web is because it's it's not accessible through any standard search engine. Right. But the thing is, is that think about this. Google, which is like the monster, right? The mm -hmm. BMOS, it encompasses everything. It only indexes 16% of the internet. 16%. Wow. So when you think about that, that's really scary. It's like an ice. So the bird. rest is like kitty videos, kittens. Well, no. Fighting and wrestling. It's, no, it's not really like that at all. Now it's interesting. Most of the content here is only available through the intranet, which is a private network. Um, there's a lot of different things there, like uh, government resources and medical data and those information that shouldn't be accessed by the regular public. Mm -hmm. But then, unfortunately, then there goes the dark web. Now, you can't stumble on it by servicing for something else, but you have to go through a program called TOR. It stands for the Onion Router. And then they also have an Onion Domain name. So uh, this is where it gets tricky because you can't go through a regular browser. You have to run through this system, and then it gets you into the dark web. Now, here's the deal. There's no logical reason you want to be there. No. And so they talk about how to access it, which I'm not even hugely comfortable with, so I don't go through the rest of it. But um, it's weird. They have something called Alpha Bay, which is very similar to um, Amazon.com, except for, for everything horrible. Yeah. And it's, it's actually accesses so much dangerous material that it's actually resulted in several deaths. A couple from uh, toxic poisonings from different things that they ordered, a couple more from illegal activities. Just think of anything taboo and it's on there. And so the thing is, is that what they say, once again, there's no real reason any of us should be on it. But uh, one of the things that they can do is that because there's so much appeal to kids, like it's the dark web. Right. It's so intriguing. So instantly... Children are automatically, well, not children, but teenagers are going to go, well, I have to find that. Right, right. Unfortunately, I, I as a teenager, I as a teenager would totally, totally want to do that. So one of the things that you can do is there's a couple of different uh, nanny net programs that you can run that goes through your system, and it takes a look to see if your kids used any of the alternate routers trying to find their way into, oh, okay. into the dark web. So I'm going to post <coughs> this up on our Get Part Daily page on Todd and Aaron, but you can also do it going through a couple of the Net Nanny main programs. Just look for the indexing on dark web. It doesn't take you there, and you don't want to go there, but it will tell you if your kids or anyone who's on your system, has, your yeah. IP system, attempted to access it. And there's no reason to be on there, like you said. Yeah. Absolutely no reason, because the content is... Th think of everything disgusting. Time, times 10. Everything evil. Everything is taboo. Everything that's anyway. Well, it's interesting. So that's a good, it's a good program. It's interesting because there, there is actually a couple of good things there because there's dissidents from places like Syria and, uh, you know, Tunisia, they, China. They don't want to get caught. Yeah, right? and yeah. North Korea that actually can communicate via the dark web right. where it's inaccessible by traditional government routes. So there can be good applications, but there is nothing good for any of us. No. There's not. Unless you're a Syrian dissident, there is nothing there that is useful for you. All right. So in any case, it's if you think there might be this kind of activity or your kids or your teens are especially secretive, right. it's worth running a, a tracker just to see. But other than that, why would you want to go there? All right. There's some big news going on at the University of Utah. Daisy's got that information. Yeah, unfortunately, we live by the University of Utah, so we've been spending a lot of time worrying about this. Uh, of course, Daisy's in the Get Part Daily Newsroom. It's brought to you by Utah Credit Approval. 
Bad things happen to good people, but you can get your credit back on track and a reliable automobile by calling 801-921-9819. Columbus Travel. Columbus Travel has this epic weekly newsletter by, you can access at columbusvacations.com that can get you spectacular savings on last minute deals, flights, airfare, hotel, everything you can imagine. Also by All Utah Plumbing, Heating and Air. It's 24 hour emergency service because nothing ever breaks at two o'clock in the afternoon. It's usually 12 hours later when you're asleep. Um, you can reach John at All Utah plumbing.com. Daisy, my dear, what is the latest on the U of U? It's Todd and Aaron. Hello, everyone. Here's what's making headlines Tuesday, October 31st on GephardDaily.com. One person is dead and another slightly injured after a shooting Monday night on the University of Utah campus. Police say the gunman, identified as 24-year-old Austin J. Boutain, shot and killed a person during an attempted carjacking near the mouth of Red Butte Canyon. They say it happened about 8.15 p.m. after Boutain assaulted his girlfriend while they were camping in the canyon. Police were actually in the process of questioning the girlfriend when the shooting took place. More than 100 heavily armed officers from agencies across the valley, as well as the FBI, searched the campus building by building while students were ordered to shelter in place. Police searched the area east of Mario Capecci Drive throughout the night and discovered a rifle, but there was no other sign of the shooter. Just before 3 a.m., the school tweeted that the campus lockdown had been lifted. The school also canceled Tuesday's classes. In other news, Tooele police responded to a fatal auto-pedestrian accident Monday night. Tooele Police Sergeant Tanya Kalma said officers were dispatched at about 7.30 p.m. to 500 North Main Street, where a man had been hit by an SUV. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver who hit him remained at the accident site and was cooperating with police. The name of the victim has yet to be released. And does anyone out there recognize this chap? Police say this man was caught on surveillance video while trying to break into a home in Draper about 2 a.m. Sunday. They believe he later stole a neighbor's car. Anyone who recognizes this hapless bozo is asked to call police at 801-840-4000. And time now for your Wasatch Front weather brought to you today by our spiffy new sponsors at Brio Technologies, Utah's leading audiovisual experts. High temperatures in the next few days will be in the high 50s to upper 60s under mostly sunny skies. Nighttime loads will hang in the upper 30s to mid 40s. No rain anywhere in sight. That's all for now. For more local headlines 24-7, go to getpartdaily.com. And for now, Todd and Aaron, back to you. All right. Thank uh, you, thanks, Daisy. Um, Halloween tonight. Mm. Zoe's beside herself. She's been beside herself for months. The leopard costume is all laid out with the kitty ears and the attached tail. She keeps pointing at houses and has been for the last 30 days driving down the street going, I'm going to trick or treat that house. That's where they have the full-size candy bars. Or she thinks. She's like, which house would be the best? That one over there. Why? Because it will be. That's six-year-old. Now, this started when she was four, though. I was tired by, like, the 27th block, and she's like, no, we're going to keep going. And all her little friends are like, we're tired. We're cold. And she's like, no, we're going to go on. We're going to keep And all the nephews and nieces dropped out like dead flies you know, on the ground, and Zoe's still charging ahead because there was still candy. Available. What's your best memory? Or a memory trick of... Trick-or-treating? Of trick-or-treating. Oh, no, all of them. The, the endless fights with your mother because you're being a fancy saloon girl and she wanted you to put on a sweater. And fancy saloon girls don't wear sweaters, Mom. And so then you take it off and you immediately catch a cold because you took off your sweater. Uh -huh. But that was always the case. But we always, no, we had the same racket in our neighborhood. We knew where all the good houses were, you know. Who'd you go with? Oh, my cousins and my brothers and sisters. I'll bet we'd, your group. We'd move at a terrifying pack. Oh, you were like the Charlie Brown group. Mm -hmm. And then ta my dad would go and just sort of wander behind the back, and he would end up talking to the other dads, and then he'd forget about us, and like six blocks later, he'd catch up. He'd catch like, up. Why'd your kids move on without me? Because you were just standing there. And then, of course, the inevitable candy search at the end of the night by dad to make sure that he got all, all the good stuff. Oh, but those were the dangerous ones that might have razor blades in them. So you can see my father's concern. Zoe is one of those kids who... Uh, Did you divide your candy will, out? Will eat like, one piece of candy a day. It's unnatural. It is unnatural. And she'll ask permission. She hides it herself, so she knows where it is, but Zachy, her son, doesn't. And she will ask permission to eat one piece of candy a day. I know. If you had done, if that had been me, I would have been in some sort of like sugar-laced coma underneath my bed. You never would have found me again. Well, that's what you did every year. Pretty much. You right. did that last year. Did you do did you do the division of the candy? Like when you laid everything out on the floor and then you put the crap like the Smarties and the Necco wafers right here 
and all the chocolate candy went in like a pile here. And then there were like the subsidiary piles that became less and less appealing as you went down. So you're way into this, way too much. I was very into this. Wow. You never did the genetic experiments with gummy bears and candy corn? Where you'd bite them in half and then you'd match two colors together so it'd be like, you know, it'd be like the Frankenstein gummy bear. No, we just did what all American boys do when we rolled pumpkins down, down hills, streets. All right, moving on to Colombia. By the way, kids, don't do that. By the way. They really dent cars. Just a heads up. That's awkward, yeah. yeah. All Mo right. Moving on, um, you, do you know that it's Guy Fox Day on November 2nd in England? And if you wanted to fly there, you could do it via Columbus Travel. And then you could experience Halloween here and then sort of experience it all over again three days later over in Great Britain. See, the deal is this. With Columbus Travel, if you go to columbusvacations.com, they have these spectacular last-minute deals. And usually, you know how they always say, hey, book your air for like six weeks out because you're never going to get a good deal. you just got to stop obsessing over that poor lonely man by himself. The poor guy drinking out of a coconut. Well, he's happy. He's got his coconut. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't need companionship. All right, so when you go online, you can look at all the pictures and all that stuff, but then you call Columbus Travel. And they're going to give you a lot of the cool stuff that you're not going to get online. You're going to get, like, upgrades on, on, on the ship. Yeah, if you're doing a cruise or you're doing, like, an all-inclusive, do not book that sucker right. on your own. Not when they can give you so many more things. All right, do it today. Go to Columbus Columbusvacations.com. There you go. All right, so um, we want to thank you very much for watching, but for first, we're going to tell me something good. Okay, tell me something good is the cutest one ever. And I, the reason why I love this is that in our in our neighborhood, we used to have Elder Snow, and he was 97. And when he was 97, he still walked every single day. Yeah, he did. And he also bought this cherry red Firebird that he instantly dented because he wasn't used to driving. And right. his kids were mad because they thought they were sp he was spending their inheritance. And I'm like, you go buy another one. You keep buying as many as you want. You're 97. You get all the sports cars you want. But I digress. This 95-year-old gentleman is wonderful. His name is Hi Harvey Jerf. And uh, he, feel, he knows how important it is to keep moving. I mean, he said, the day you stop moving is the day you die. He says, I'm like a shark. <laughs> and I love him so much. He's a retired biology teacher, World War II veteran. And he loves walking so much that he's had the same one-mile route since he retired 35 years ago. How old is he? He's 95 years old. Okay. So he's addicted to the routine, and, and um, he, he feels like it's the one thing that keeps him going. And because his wife suffered a stroke and she has to be in a care center, right. it's about half a mile away. So he walks there every day oh, and spends time nice, with his nice. wife. And then returns the walk. Now, uh, this is in Plymouth, Minnesota. Um, and, but here's the deal. As he's been getting older and older, at 95, a mile is a lot. And he lives in a fairly hilly, steep area. Sure. So his I don't care if it's downhill the whole way. That's... 95, yeah. And his neighbors were noticing that he was starting to kind of sit on their stoop for a minute and kind of catch his breath, and then he'd be struggling with his cane to get back up. Uh -oh. So people started setting out chairs for him on their front lawn so that it would be easier for him to sit down, take a moment, and then get back up than it would be to struggle up from the sidewalk or, you know, the grass. Oh, that's funny. And so if you follow through the neighborhood route, you can see every day that they'll put the chair out, rain or shine, right. snow, sleet, whatever, right. and they'll have it set out where Harvey can sit down, take his break, and they've all kind of spaced it out now to make sure that... Oh, like, so funny. like every like block or so that there's another chair laid out for Harvey. And so the fun thing is, is though that usually they when they got this started, the kids used to hang out because it was fun to watch him come up and he would sit and tell them stories about World War II and his right. adventures. Right. And even when they went back into school, the neighbors found that they were still kind of starting to hang out because he was so much fun to talk to. Mm -hmm. So while he's getting his mile exercise route every day, he's also influencing his whole neighborhood because they've all kind of gotten together to check on him and hear his stories and talk to him and he's now he goes I feel like a neighborhood celebrity oh there you go and he is I tell you what if I did that my neighborhood I'd want a lazy boy <laughs> or a hammock did you put out a bark a for like me a hammock and a cool beverage I'm just so in love with this man though look at him I love the safety vest too I know that's very important it's a good look it's very, and he always wears his World War II cap oh we gotta tell you this really quick uh, Christopher's, we do a steakhouse giveaway to thank you for watching, and it's really simple to do this. Uh, where do they go to sign up? Oh, yeah, we decided on the most epically luxe steakhouse we could find in Utah, and they surprisingly said yes. So dinner for four is simple. All you do is go to one of our Facebook pages and comment on the show today. You can do that on the Get Part Daily Facebook page, Get Part Approved, or on the Todd and Aaron page. And uh, once you've commented, you're entered to win, and then we draw every Friday. So... We wanted to make it simple because we're not bright enough to remember a complex contest. Hey, coming up, Kevin Spacey.
This kind of came out of nowhere yesterday. Oh, no, these rumors have been going around forever. But you know how they make this big deal out of sexual harassment for women in Hollywood? Right. I thought a lot about this. No, it's not just women. It's men, too. And unfortunately, Kevin Spacey had to apologize. We'll talk about that next. Credit approval. Bad things happen to good people, but repair your credit and find the car you want at Utah Credit Approval. Just call 801-404-7201. Also by Columbus Travel. Sign up for their weekly newsletter today for some screamingly good last-minute travel deals. You can do that at columbusvacations.com. And also by All Utah Plumbing, Heating, and Air. This is the perfect time to check out your heating system and make sure that you're ready for the cold winter months ahead. Go to allutahplumbing.com. And don't forget, 24-hour service. So, Jeff, you do mortgages, right? I do. How do you do? Well, you go to our website, 4minutemortgage.com, fill out the application. We'll call you within one business day. The whole thing takes about a month to start to finish. We went to the bank. They got really personal. I went through all of our personal records and all of our finances. And then there was that little deal about the $8,000 closing cost. <laughs> took like four months. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Here, we heard about we, we, Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein, and then, of course, the, several, several other directors were came under fire, and a lot more women started coming through saying, Kevin's, yeah, this happens to me, Kevin too. Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey, um, really respected actor. He's currently in House of Cards at HBO Academy. Which Award. is now ending, by the way. Yeah, and he's a two-time Oscar winner, um, and uh, it's interesting because... Anthony Rapp uh, said that Kevin befriended him when they were both performed on Broadway shows. He was 14 when he attended a party at Spacey's apartment in 1986. And at the end of the night, an inebriated Spacey picked him up, he said, placed him on his bed and tried to uh, climb on top of him. He said he was able to get away right. and get out of the apartment. Well, Anthony Rapp's now 46 and he's starring on the TV show Star Trek Discovery. And he said he came forward after allegations against Harvey Weinstein sparked the controversy and about sexual assault and sexual harassment. And he said, but everything was about women. He said, this happened to me. And he said, and I think men are much more humiliated to come forward. And I think it's humiliating no matter what happened, what so, sex it's happened to, but I so, understand. So Mr. Spacey apologizes. Well, it's a pretty backhanded apology. So what he says is, he, on Twitter he said, as those closest to me know in my life I've had relationships with both men and women. I've loved and had romantic encounters with men throughout my life and now I choose to live life as a gay man. Um, I want to deal with this openly and honestly and so that starts with examining my own behavior. I am beyond horrified by this allegation. If I did behave as he describes because I do not remember it, I owe him the sincerest apology for what had been deeply inappropriate drunken behavior and I'm sorry for the feelings he describes having carried with him all these years. So you really didn't mm -hmm. apologize. And you also blamed your actions on stating that you're gay. There are many lovely gay people that do not behave like this. It's and true. trying to say that it happened because you're gay is a deep insult to the rest of your community. So wow. it, it is. Think about it. it. George Michael did the same thing when he got caught in that public bathroom mm -hmm. in an episode with a younger person and mm -hmm. he said the same thing like well I have to come out and say I'm gay no you didn't do that because you're gay you did that because you're a, you're an you're idiot creepy yeah so there you go he sort of apologized but it is an interesting note just because yeah it happens to me too and yes uh, this is a bad news day for Kevin Spacey because um, Kevin Spacey and Robin Wright um, uh, just found out that House of Cards which is their huge uh, show, Showtime show is out yeah, it got canceled, which is a pity because it was very, very highly rated. From a lot of people seasons. liked it. Was it a planned uh, cancellation? I or? don't think anyone knew. It just came really. Out. Yeah, it's not in regards to his apology. It, no, I guess it had been brewing, but it was just a sucky day for oh. Kevin Spacey okay. fans. Um, um, the gag order has been lifted, and I'm not Yay. sure what they were being gagged about because it's Comic Con. Well, and I know there's a, a case between San Diego's Comic Con and Salt Lake's Comic Con, but. Um, not, I, so I don't 
Well, what happened is what once, is once Salt Lake Comic Con uh, and Dan Farr and Brian Brandenburg made this monstrous convention that is like the second biggest in the country now, yeah. um, Salt Lake Comic, uh, San Diego Comic Con suddenly went, hey, wait, we're going to sue. You can't use that name because it's ours. Comic Con? I'm, I'm sure not because you're panicked that we're doing really well. And Brian and Dan Farr shot back with, there's a million cons all over this country that use Comic Con. It's it's not something you own. But they've been back and forth in this court battle forever. So they, they, we were sued. Well, the frustrating thing is, is that um, they, the judge in the case put it under a gag order, meaning that Dan and Brian couldn't even really defend themselves in public opinion. Right, right. They right. couldn't talk about it at all, and it just a federal court of appeals uh, last week ruled that the gag order is actually a violation of First Amendment free speech. So now Sally Comic Con can defend itself more, you know, more effectively and talk about the fact that no, this is. This is something that everybody uses. So and that's all they're going to gonna say after this whole thing about the gag order, and they're mm-hmm. going to go, "Hey, it's not fair." Well, no, but they're they're allowed to defend themselves, and okay. it is a big deal because court of public opinion does play a huge role. All right, so I think I would like to make a suggestion. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, my f- idea for a new con, mm-hmm. which is uh, con con, so you have um, uh, prisoners uh, go and they get signatures and photos of famous uh, bad guys. Nice, huh? You know, I don't know if you remember suggesting this to Dan Farwitz I did, I when, did. during an interview when he stared at you like this <laughs> for about 20 minutes, and because he's a polite man, he went, Thank you, Todd. I'll ex, take that ex, under advice. Con, con. Um, uh, my other idea is when this goes to court, mm-hmm. that everyone should dress up like a superhero. <laughs> Wonder Woman we comes all, to mind. Every, all of us the same one? Poison Ivy. You no. want to, Okay, it could just, be any one of them. It could be just, any one. They just have to do it in cosplay. <laughs> I think that even the jury should be in full, cosplay. Are you kidding? Full makeup. Do you think this is How really going How could you possibly try a Comic-Con case without dressing up? Is this really going to go to court? It's already in court. It's been going for the last three years. <laughs> because of a name? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, San Diego. We're, you may be the biggest, but we're still number two, and we're coming for you. Geekathon. Well, technically. That's refreshing. Technically, there's a bunch of Geekathons and Nerdathons. You could call it that. They already do. I live in my mother's basement con. (laughs) You do remember that our two closest (laughs) friends are very (laughs) avid cosplayers. Oh, I wasn't talking about them. (laughs) Okay. Sorry, Jen and Ryan. I love you. All right. Orson Welles. I can't believe Orson Welles. Do you remember no, hearing I about don't. this? I don't. Well, no, we weren't alive. It's 1938. No, but do you remember hearing the brouhaha about it? I remember well, hearing about all, it in history class when I was in high school. If you're living in the dark, uh, golden age of radio, this is when the families, the, you've seen the pictures, and everyone's sitting around the living room, the kids are on the carpet, all gathered dad's around. smoking a pipe, mom's smoking something, and uh, <laughs> they, they're all like looking at the radio like, oh, I wish it was the TV. And uh, they played music, you know. They they they'd say, "Well, now we're going to go to the Stardust uh, Dance Hall," and and then you hear like that, um, and that was a show, and you listened for an hour, and then it turned off, and there was nothing. So anyway, during this, they went to a play, they went to a dance hall, and they were playing the music, and it was interrupted like four times by a news announcement. Talking about there was an explosion on Mars. Strange, yeah. And then there was a burning thing shooting through the sky, and something had landed, and they just kept going and going and going. And then it was like, uh, after the interruptions, it was suddenly they broke in. And this is the Mercury Theater Company. And they broke in, and they start in Grover's Mill, New, New Jersey, which doesn't exist, I don't think. Um, and then they said, you know, oh, you want to read it? Here. Mm-hmm. Um, Good heavens, he declared. Something's wiggling out of the shadow like a gray snake. Now here's another and another one and another one. They look like tentacles to me. I can see the thing's body now. It's large, large as a bear. It glistens like wet leather. But that face, it, it, ladies and gentlemen, it's indescribable. I can hardly force myself to keep looking at it. It's so awful. The eyes are black and gleam like a serpent. The mouth is V-shaped with saliva dripping from its rimless lips that seem to quiver and pulsate. Wow, you're good. But no, people, but you know it when you're an announcer. You went know. crazy. People went into their basements. People were running everywhere. It was like there was panic going on. And the FCC, the, the communications uh, deal, uh, came down and they went through all the rules and they didn't break any rules. 
But don't you remember there was a point that because radio was the thing, it was the big communication thing then, there were military groups that actually mobilized. I mean, there were bases, and they had, like, Jets ready to go up. Like, what are we looking for? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it took a long time to get everybody straight back out. Like, this was just a play. It was a hoax. And Orson Welles was only 23 when he put that on. Yeah. And and the whole thing was, can you imagine somebody tried to pull that off today? Does everybody just go online, go, let's check CNN? <laughs> no, that's fake news. <laughs> it didn't happen. Hey, there's no New Jersey town called that. You know, it'd be like, no it's, fun whatsoever. It, re it really is hard to pull a prank now. You <laughs> can't. It's like Fox News. No. Oh, they are covering it. <laughs> um, but it, you, there's no way you could do it. And it was so convincing. Because I don't think the American people had been punked before. <laughs> and he punked them so good. And some people are furious about it. But once again, the FCC went through, and he and it, it really did jumpstart his career. And Orson Welles, of course, had an unbelievable run in Hollywood. But it was such a creative thing to do, and at only 23, to like seriously dismantle like the entire country. Do you remember that story we did uh, earlier in the week, mm -hmm. or last yesterday? No, last week. Um, and they talked about the uh, the girl who won the tr won the the golf match. She joined the boys team because they didn't have a girls team. And then they went through and she got she won three three over par and she won it. There yeah. she is. Da, 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 da. Yeah, she won the tournament. Right. And the Massachusetts Golf Association said you don't get the trophy because right. you are not a male. And she said, well, I'm. I know I'm not male, but I'm on the male team because they're not a female. And I won. They went, no, you don't get the trophy. Now, the team won, and they got a trophy. But an individual, the female, could not get it. So this was interesting. So she had gotten the best score ever. The news of the score was publicized. Um, but here's the interesting thing. They they thought it was really pitiful. But the guy who, who was the runner-up. Um, this is so cool. He, he, he said, this isn't my trophy. He said, you won it. Mm -hmm. and, and the fun part is the officials were pissed. Yeah. Because they'd already made their decision. You know, so the guy, he's trying to give it to the girl, and the girl says, no, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm all good with this. And so she declined very graciously. And then uh, one of the, the guy with the... Uh, in the, the so the coach. golf tournament director who yeah. was ticked off, he says, look, I, I don't make the rules, but he says, that does not make me happy. So he used his own money to buy... Emily, a first place trophy of her own. There you go. And he says, you're going to keep this till the rules are changed. And and but next week, they're going to allow ethnic people into the club. Oh, that'll be exciting. No, but it's it, that's pretty cool. I love the fact that, number one, the teenage boy yeah. immediately did the right thing. Yeah. Number two, the director was like, I don't like being stuck in this archaic mess, but I'm still going to show you. We, um, we uh, in our house, I had almost forgotten that t uh, tonight is uh, Halloween. And last night it was just like, what's missing here? What's mi here? There, this is me and Zoe with really scary lighting, which was done on purpose, by the way. I really don't like that lamp. Look, and you know that's... The speed carving. Nice. I want you, I want you to she, know... Wait, is she eating the raw pumpkin? Uh -huh. yeah, you, it's let her, you let her eat the raw and pumpkin? And then we cook the seeds. I've but always loved how she crouches like a gargoyle. The talent on this, i got to tell you right now, uh, my, uh, my video uh, on this is incredible because I actually shot around uh, the mess in our kitchen, which was trash. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of pushed everything to the sides. And uh, anyway, she was really excited. Now, now. Ooh, now we get pumpkin seeds. Yeah. That was very cool. And she puts her hand, and you're like, "Ew!" No, she's like, "We're eating the seeds." Why well, didn't? I know Zoe is Zoe is raw. capable of any disgusting thing <laughs> yeah. that, that it could ever be, which makes me prouder of her than I can possibly tell you. I'm really worried. Uh, today is our first time in this new house that we're renting, and I'm really worried that we're not going to get anybody. Yeah, because we're on a hill. Biz busy it's street, fairly, and it's fairly busy, so I don't think we're going to get a lot. I you remember when I we to? lived on P Street, it was horrific. I was out in the middle of the street yelling, free candy. Which really looks bad for a middle-aged man to be standing there holding a candy bowl in the middle of the street. Yeah. You know what? Right. I know we're going to have so few trick-or-treaters tonight, I'm going to buy the full-size candy bars. I'm Once they get the word out, I'm you're gonna, screwed. I'm going to do it. You're going to get yeah, screwed Yeah, sure, Galvin. This. I'm coming for you, sister. Yeah, All I'm right. taking you on. All right, coming up. Um... Kids shove kind of, all kinds of things up their nose, in their ears, uh, but the doctors figured out a pretty smart way to help this kid, and it's coming up next.
The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is brought to you by Fink and McGregor. Did you know that you can qualify for a mortgage with a credit score as low as 600? Just go to fink-mcgregor.com for more information. It's mortgages made simple. Also by the Vein Clinic. There's several excellent varicose vein removal procedures, but you need to find the right one for you. You can do that by scheduling an appointment at theveinclinic.com. And also by Black Diamond Heating electric, plumbing, and air. Black Diamond experts, they also have a brand new office open in Ogden. You'll be glad you called an expert, blackdiamondexpert.com. <laughs> Apply today. And drive away. So here's a story. Um, Eleven year old boy uh, decided to. Eleven's uh, a little old. Well, maybe not. He's shove a, a couple magnets up his nose. Okay, so let's just go over this really quickly. So one went up this side, and then one went up this side. Which is like the worst possible thing that could happen. And he pushed them up. Now you have to remember there's skin in between them, and the magnets are sticking to each other. Between the septum, yeah. Up in the nose. So the mom goes, you're an idiot, and uh, puts him in the car. You really are. What are you doing? Who? T but this is dangerous because they've had kids swallow them before, and the trouble is, is it impacts they, the colon. It, it can damage the digestive in, tract. Because in the they, intestines, and it'll make it die, and then they're in trouble. Um, so the kid went in, and uh, New England Journal of Medicine uh, wrote this story up, and uh, basically they're sitting around going, they were too far up to get the tongs in there, you know? And so they're just like, surgery? Someone actually said surgery. So uh, someone had a great idea, and they sent them down to the store, and they came back with two kitchen magnets. <laughs> that were just stronger. Stronger. And so they put it up here, and they dragged the That's the freaking magnets. evil genius. Isn't it? That is. That is so smart. That is so smart. I'm so impressed. I know. All right, let's go to Daisy in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom. She is brought to you by Fink and McGregor Mortgages Made Simple. If you go to think-mcgregor.com, they've got like a really quick four-minute quiz. You can go through it, and it will spit out all these options for mortgages, and someone can call you back within the next business day. It's Fink and McGregor Mortgages Made Simple. Also by Liberate a Man, Escape Adult Addiction for Good, showing you the exact steps to freedom. Uh, it's liberateaman.com. Also by Black Diamond Experts. They are experts in electric, plumbing, heating, and air. Uh, also a brand-new place in Ogden now. So you can go to blackdiamondexpert.com. Daisy, my dear, what is going on today? Good morning, Todd and Aaron. Hello again, everyone. Here's a look at national and world news for Tuesday, October 31st on getparkdaily.com. Donald Trump is angry. One day after tweeting, after tweeting Russiagate was over, his former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, and sidekick Rick Gates surrendered to the Justice Department, charged with money laundering and conspiring against the U.S. government. But that wasn't the only shoe to drop. It turns out former Trump campaign manager, foreign policy advisor George Papadopoulos, has pleaded guilty to making a false statement to the FBI after lying about his interactions with foreign officials close to the Russian government. Observants say Papadopoulos' arrest has profound implications as it is a tangible connection between Trump's campaign and Russians bent on stealing the 2016 election. U.S. Special Forces captured a militant believed to have played a pivotal role in the attack on the Benghazi consulate, which killed four Americans in 2012. Donald Trump issued a statement announcing forces captured Mustafa al-Imam during a raid in Libya, adding he will face justice for the attack which killed Ambassador Christopher Stevens and three other Americans. Elite special forces captured al-Imam this weekend and transferred him offshore to a waiting ship where he's being held until he can be transferred to the U.S. prosecution in federal court. Michael Jackson has been dead for more than eight years, but the King of Pop is still topping charts as Forbes' highest-earning dead celebrity of 2017. 
Bob says Jackson's estate earned more than 75 million this year. The fifth year in a row, Jackson topped Forbes' dead celebrity list. The lucrative year was boosted by an animated Halloween special in CBS, a new compilation album released last month, and an ongoing Cirque du Soleil tribute show, among other business ventures. That's it for now. For more he headlines from across the country and around the world, go to GetParkDaily.com. And Todd and Aaron, back to you. All right. Welcome back to the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream at GetParkDaily.com. Ah, see now. And look, it's the Haunted Golf Course. That's right. Jam, brought mm. to you by Brio Technologies. There you go. All right, so joining us is Nolan Baker. Nolan, how are you? Great. Let me see if I've got the story right on this. Um, you uh, live at Applewood Estates, which is a trailer park. It's about 52 people there. And you're a great community. Someone bought the property, and you've got to find a new place to live. How am I doing so far? Not bad. All right. Now, I'm guessing at this point, because you were telling me that a lot of your neighbors are elderly, and they've lived there for a really long time. True. And so, basically, someone comes in and goes, hey, we just sold your property. You all have to leave. This seems to me to be an unfortunate situation for you and the rest of your community. Kind of scary. And, and the thing is, yeah, they can do that, but it goes back to that whole concept of, yeah, big business can come in and totally decimate a community that's been there forever. That seems unjust. I'm all for commerce, but it seems unjust. So how have you handled this? I think so far we're just trying to take it with a grain of salt and look at it as an opportunity from the new owners, from Paul and Nate, to try to make this work to buy the Applewood Estates. Buy it back from the company. They actually buy it from the two owners that own it now. So, so how, where are you at during, in that process? How far? Two hundred thousand dollars short at now, this point. Now, let's let's put this in perspective. How much did they expect you to pay to get this property? Total of four point six million. That would include like what? three point four million from UROC, a donation that. We would have to repay over 30 years. Now, you rock. This is cool. This is a company that works just with trailer parks on letting them, uh, helping them buy their their own properties. Yes. Okay, so $3.6 is a pretty stunning thing, but then you still had this other huge chunk of money, and people were like, no one's going to get that. And you went, no, try me. So you managed to pull the rest of this money together through what, donations, grants? How have we've, you done it? We've put it together 26000 at this point. Mm-hmm. Which we think for senior citizens, that's, that's, pretty, that's good. pretty good. Now, who gave you the grant? Uh, Olean Walker Fund. That's amazing. I had no idea she had that. Yeah, it was a million dollar grant. Nice job. You were like the dark master of fundraising. <laughs> Look at you. So I we're, mean uh, it. What's the deadline on this? It will be the 23rd of November. So we're talking Ooh. about 23 days. What? Just over three weeks. And we've yeah. got to pull together $200,000. Yep. Now, Here's one of the reasons I've noticed that a lot of people wanted to donate, because I went on to the site to take a look at it. People were genuinely angry that your life can get turned upside down that dramatically through just simple control of other people with a lot more money than you have. And they, even though it was a little bit of money that they could donate, they, they wanted to do their part as just showing the little guy still has power. So what would you say to people, because I mean, even five ten dollars $10 per person at this point, if we got enough of them, would be enough. What would you say to have them donate? I think if everyone just puts in a dollar or two, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever they think they can afford, that will help us a lot. This, uh, the website has actually had a few technical problems, but the Help Save Applewood Seniors that my wife put together yesterday okay. off of Facebook, that seems to be working. All right. And okay. once again, we'll put that link up on our Facebook page. What is it pages. again? It's Help Save Applewood Seniors, the H, the S, the A, and the Seniors. Is capital is just those four letters. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. We'll put the links once again up on our, our Facebook pages so you can find it there. But, Nolan, I mean, for you, it's like, let's explain what happens. If you guys have to leave, especially after you did a rather magnificent job of finding these millions, what happens to people? How much does it cost to move a trailer and have to put it somewhere else? Where do these people go? Eighteen to twenty thousand dollars for double whites like ours. Just to put the wheels on it. Mm hmm That's without having to worry about a new pad and... Right, water and mm -hmm, so utilities. I mean, so it can things up. So basically, unless you can drop twenty grand and get your, your trailer moved, you could lose your home. Yeah, basically. And they could sell it for pennies on the dollar. Wow. 
So, the, so you can see why this is so important. It's the simple fact that it's not just, okay, I'll pick up and go to a new place to rent. This is someone's life and their home, and it can literally be taken away from them. And that's something I don't think people understand. No, it's, it's, it's threatening, and it's uh, scary. I would imagine. What a great opportunity for a business out there yes. to step in and help out. Wouldn't that be me? And we would publicize that business we and would. show them to the community. Yes, we would. Massive promotion about how great they are for Con helping yes. someone as awesome. This could be your grandfather. Oh. Your grandfather. See? Contractors out there, electrical companies, you could help out. Think about it. Well, thank you so much for coming, and we've helping get the word out, and we're very happy to do that for you. This is, it is a big deal. This is your life. Yeah, it means a lot, and we really appreciate it so much. And I know that you don't, you know, you kind of downplay your own feelings, but I know that you've been very worried about a lot of the people in your community because they don't really have the resources or the family backing if this doesn't go through. No, there are some of them are older than us. They have more disabilities than we have. They're not working. They can't afford their own fixed income. It's devastating. And and time is of the essence. It Three is. weeks. All right. Okay. So there's the uh, there's the uh, the address to go to. Uh, help out as best you can. That would be great. And uh, we'll keep updated on this. Thank you again. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nolan. All right. We will be back in just a couple of minutes. Stay with us here. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is brought to you by Fink and McGregor. Go to fink-mcgregor.com for mortgages made simple. Because they're a broker, they have a number of different options they can offer you. Just go through a four-minute questionnaire, and someone will call you back by the next business day and get you on your way. It's fink dash The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is brought to you by Fink and McGregor. Did you know that you can qualify for a mortgage with a credit score as low as 600? Just go to fink-mcgregor.com for more information. It's mortgages made simple. Also by the Vein Clinic. There's several excellent varicose vein removal procedures, but you need to find the right one for you. You can do that by scheduling an appointment at theveinclinic.com. And also by Black Diamond Heating electric, plumbing, and air. Black Diamond Experts, they also have a brand new office open in Ogden. You'll be glad you called an expert, blackdiamondexpert.com. I want to clarify, they're experts in electric, plumbing, heating, and air, meaning that pretty much anything that can go wrong in your home is something they can fix for you, unless you're knocking holes in the the drywall and that's that's a whole nother story in your problem but for these guys no matter what 24 7 and I know it's 24 7 I've seen their trucks out they will be there for you now one of the nice things is they're especially good at helping keep things maintained and ready to go and at a ridiculously affordable price so that you should get your furnace checked you want to make sure there's no co2 problems you want to make sure everything's working at peak capacity um, you know it's just even a, a few you were telling me this, just even a few bits of efficiency, a few percentages of efficiency mean the difference between uh, like $100, 200 extra dollars a month in heating. Oh, yeah, yeah. If, 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 you, know, you have to maintain your stuff. Well, this is the thing that they're especially good at. And because they're licensed, bonded, and insured, you like having them in your house, you feel comfortable. And when they give you a bid for something to be fixed, it is exactly what the bid was. There will be no special overages, no special charges, no like late fees. It's just what they said it would be because they stand by what they do. So you can go to blackdiamondexpert.com, blackdiamondexpert.com, and you can reach them there. What is this? Octopi taking over Australia? Atlantis. They're calling it Atlantis. Isn't what, this where, cool? Where is this? Well, what? They, they just discovered this. It's an octopus city off the coast of Australia, and it's a city of octopi. Now, um, the one here, which I'm deeply in love with, if you take a look at this little guy, he is the gloomy octopus. They are actually called gloomy octopi. Uh, that's their that's their designation. Look what at do that they taste face. like? Stop. Well, if you found them all in one place, how convenient. Well, this is very interesting. Atlantis is, uh, what they found is, is that it literally is a city engineered by octopi. They engineer small cities where they can all hang out together. Um, they they move rocks? Yeah, they move rocks and they literally create homes in sort of their own little ecosystem so they can all hang out together. That's, I think that's the most adorable thing ever. I could, boy, there'd be hickeys everywhere, wouldn't there? <laughs> what? Atlantis. You can take a look at it on Twitter if you want. I think it's beautiful. They would because they're suction cups. But they too. do. They like they're swimming along together, and that's not really a traditional octopi thing. That's very interesting. And they're all just like they're all hanging out and they're kind of doing. Oh, I bet you the guy who discovered them is covered with hickeys.
as you swam quietly in and rrr, maybe not. Um, how much money do you have with you? <laughs> how much do you think? Uh, okay, I got some change. Do you want me to count that too? Is that it? No. That's our 401k. So you have like a dollar. Okay. I do, um, everything, I, I do I was, everything by debit card. I was, reading, I was reading the story about, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm so sad about this, um, Bill Gates. He must, he must be just crying right now. Why? Because he's not the richest guy in the world anymore. Oh, no, he's the second richest. Uh, imagine so how. Sad. He's just probably crying right now. Jeff Bezos, he leapfrogged Bill Gates for the title of the world's richest billionaire. There he is. Amazon.com stock jumped 13.5% on Friday when they turned in another incredible earnings report, more than a quarter billion dollar profit in three months. How um, much? What? Bezos owns nearly 80 million shares in Amazon.com, right. meaning that he made more than 10 billion from the one day stock surge and is now worth well over $90 billion. Uh, in one day, he made $10 billion, $10 billion. from a stock surge. Uh, let's go back to his picture, shall we? How much is he worth? $90 billion. He should hire someone to trim his chest hair just a little bit. Actually, it looks like it's been sort of carefully combed up. Maybe he likes Maybe it. it's a toupee. If he grows it long enough, he can just grow Maybe it he cloned himself when he had hair, and then he waited, and then he transplanted it onto his chest because he can. He could surgically implant somebody else's head on his if he wanted to at he, this point. He could do that. Take that man with a full head of hair and buy him. See how much again? Ninety billion dollars. So if you made if you made ten percent interest on that, well, I mean, think about it. According to my my math, that would be a lot. But you know, the thing that's pretty interesting about them, though, is they have come up with a lot of different applications that, and we've talked, for instance, like how they're they're trying drone mm -hmm. delivery, like, and they started with burritos, which I thought yeah. was hysterical, yeah. and they're they're experimenting on applications where they could deliver medicine and emergency supplies to farther flung routes. This is Amazon. Uh-huh. And so they're, they're using a lot of their technology for good and not necessarily for evil. <laughs> but I just must tell you, as an Amazon.com Prime affiliate, we are very happy with them. That two-day delivery is the thing. What What is it that they're not going to do? They can buy any of us. They can buy all they of can. us at this point. They, you know, someone comes up with an idea like, oh, you drive up to the grocery store and you've ordered online. They're like, we're going to do that. And they do, and they crush the competition. It's yeah, they're like, experimenting with Uber right now, so it's like, bye. Yeah, right? Uber style delivery, rather. Oh, so, my gosh. Yeah, so $90 billion. I, I, I guess I'm just back to the concept that you can surge $10 billion in one day on Wall Street. Ten billion dollars. Where do you put it? And at what point does it become like not even understandable anymore? Because I mean, I tried to explain a million dollars to Zoe, and it was like mind blown. I mean, how do you even get the, to the point where you would even know where that much money was? The best picture to represent a million dollars that I've ever seen happened in the Iraq War, and when they put uh, our people in, uh, there were certain groups that were just meant to go into towns. And take care of people with money, to to get them to come foster goodwill and goodwill and, and make stuff. sure they were covered. Yeah. And so with this one group, there's this there's this just a building with just a room in it and like a desk and a chair, and in the corner there is a pallet, and on the pallet there are banded money bunches. <laughs> And then the whole just a, sick, a good designation as I've heard. And the whole thing is wrapped in clear plastic, and there's a soldier just sitting up on top of it, leaning against the wall. So they took a million dollars, put it on a pallet, wrapped it in plastic, and set it in the corner. Wouldn't it be about the size of this studio? No, it's a pallet. You've seen the wooden pallets mm -hmm. they ship stuff on. It's like that. How tall? About uh, about here. That's a lot of freaking money. That's a lot. So that is, that made me think those are probably hundreds or twenties, and that gave me a concept of a million dollars. So where you even shoot to a billion? If you count to a million, uh, like one, two, three, four, I believe it'll take 36 years. I'm not <sighs> sure I've got that kind of time available. Well, you have a dollar. <laughs> 
So it's almost as So good. you're going to save a lot of time. Yeah, it'll um, be super quick. They're talking, <clears throat> uh, talking about, um, uh, put, I saw a kid with a leash on him the other day at the supermarket. I'm still How kind do you of feel t- about that. I'm still kind of torn on those. I mean, I said the mother and, just has a short attention span or something. Well, I mean, the, there were days <coughs> I would have probably gone that way because Zach. Oh yeah, complaining. okay. Our I'm sorry. Twins, <laughs> our forgot. twins were pure evil, and oh they my knew, gosh, they knew how to make it us against them because <sighs> they knew how to work together really fast. So if they wanted something, one of them would look at the other and they go and they go off in separate directions. So if you're at the grocery store and it's you, you're like, which one do I catch first? Which which? All right, I mean, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell them a fair story. Oh, we went to no. the fair, the and we took three nieces with us. So we now have five adults, five adults in our in our. How old were they? Our twins were. They were ten ish, eleven ish. No, younger. No, May, eleven ish. Okay, ten or eleven. And so, they, so they're this tall, and there's five adults. We lost McLean five times. So no, I can't. I can't judge her. <coughs> and I, I can't judge her. I don't I know st- if I would want to do it, but I cannot judge that woman. I went. I found him the third time, and I came back and I said, "What is wrong with you? He's a child. You're supposed to watch him. He gets away that many times." Five adults against two kids, and I took they them still home. outsmarted I us. I did. Remember, I was I was a little ticked. Oh no, no! I just took the kids and I went home. Well, no, there's only so much anxiety level you can ratchet before it's like, okay, it's not even worth the fun. And you guys, anymore. I'm just going to go home. You guys would all be sitting talking in a group, and the kids were like, gone. Anyway, you're blaming us now. No. Oh no! So as you recall, I think I, I all was, of you out there heard I it. Was Todd didn't. Horrified. Todd said you. He didn't say we as in a global sense. He said you. <laughs> Indicating that he was the separate island of responsibility. I think we. No, I was just busy chasing them all down. Zach was easy Mm. because he just went for the sweets. McLean was driven by the music and was a slave to it and had to find a stage. He's a slave to the rhythm. It's true. Oh my gosh! Okay, so I I'm now okay with this with with a leash. Well, there's better ways to do it now, and especially since we have children capable of caring. Five times. Electronics. Okay. Um, the era of technology has been wonderful for okay. tracking kids in many, many different ways. All right. Um, the location apps are a big deal, especially for, uh, they're finding that there's a lot of parents, especially with kids with special needs. Right. A lot of families with older folks uh-huh. who might have dementia uh-huh. or, or other situations. They found that this is literally, literally a lifesaver. Um, one of the ones, MM Guardian, I like because this is good for snotty teenagers. You can see who your kid's texting with. You can see which apps they use the most. Uh, that's that's pretty that's pretty handy. You have to put it on their phone, mm-hmm. I, I would imagine. Yeah, but it's pretty cheap. It's only like three ninety nine. Okay. Now, um, a couple of other ones are really interesting. Um, Android is also important because they say that it's actually easier um, to track a kid through Android than it is through an iPhone. Yeah. They said that because that. because if the the phone is off with an iPhone, the app doesn't track anymore. But with an Android, it still can. Oh, I see. With I some see. of the different ones. I think they're pretty amazing. Uh, the Boomerang app is good, too. What's Boomerang? Uh, Boomerang app, is this is what it also controls. It not only tracks your kids, it also controls um, you letting them onto apps, like what they download, how much time they spend on them. So if they're okay. playing Poke- Pokemon Go, like right. I do, 24-7, you can stop that. Um I mean, I can actually get a a thing and keep you from playing Pokemon all the time? You know what? The the simplest one, though, that they say that everybody should have no matter what is the Find My iPhone app. It's free. You download it. Right, And it doesn't have to be on. It doesn't have to be anything. But it was was originally designed for, number one, if you lose it where you can find it because it tracks down the GPS and it can be off. And number two, if it gets stolen, it will wipe the memory and essentially turn it into a brick. So When you you lose your phone... I don't think I've ever seen someone in such panic, unless they're in danger of losing their life. Um, no, you uh, you went cuckoo. It was black, and it was on a black car seat, and we were at the ocean side, and I was hysterical. So the first thing I do is I call. It After was, I've spent like an hour looking for it and crying. Right, I find it. And then Todd walks up and dials the Find My iPhone thing, and I'm like... I would have done that eventually. So right below the headrest on the ta- top of the seat, never you would never find it. But the the one thing is funny is the first thing we do is start calling each other. You know, you call. I I, t- I can't find my phone. Aaron, call me. And then you're listening around. You're listening around. Go out to the car. I do all this stuff. Um, there was a story I read about a guy. He did the exact same thing. And he uh, he uh, after dinner he said um, 
He goes, I can't find my phone. Go, go ahead and call it. And so he goes out and does the same thing. He gets in his car and he's listening for it. Well, there's a person who picked up on the other line at a strip club. And uh, he, he got in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> All right. So just to recap, the three top ones they're recommending right. now for affordability and reliability. MM Guardian. MM Guardian. They said that's very good. Uh, Boomerang. They like that one too. And then Life 360. Life 360 is really good because it also like notifies you when your kids get home from school. You know that they're there safe. They, oh, they click and it's by the GPS, shines. right? Yeah, right. you know that they're, they're there. You they're feel a little home. bit better about life. It also tells you where they're going, who they're with, and that's pretty interesting. Where the great strip clubs. <laughs> All right, so you have been doing. Wow. I gotta tell you, you've been doing a great job this week to get in the spooky places. Uh, and last week. And so we've covered uh, a bunch of stuff on the foothills. We did some stuff up at the uh, city. You did at the uh, Salt Lake City uh, Cemetery and some others. Uh huh. This one, then the weird, gruesome heart statue meant for just cheer up ill children. But this if one. If this is cheering people up. Uh, this one was interesting only because I saved it for last because I've actually had a real experience there. And people always say, oh, you know, I felt... And I, I can't really guarantee... Who are you with? I've ever had that kind of encounter before, anywhere but here. I was just with a group of my girlfriends. Okay. We were all 17. Right. Um, it was a late August night. And we were all, right. all hot and bored. So we're all late. And we're like, let's go up to the crematorium. Now, before we air this, I just want to tell you one thing, that these holes did appear. They were not there before. It you don't have to grass, justify this. And we fell into them, and they were about four feet deep. We were starting to scream. It was that terrifying. I was a teenager. You guys have a great day. Todd and Aaron Morning Stream at GetPartDaily.com. Prepared. Take a, Take a look and decide for yourself. To be spookified. Happy Halloween. Welcome to another round of the spookiest spots along the Wasatch Front. I've saved my personal favorite for last. This is the Old City Crematorium. Kind of scary looking, extremely cool. Look at that tower. It's notable for many things. It has a genuine stained glass Tiffany window. I believe it's that one right there. Um, but one of the interesting things about this place is how much activity it's had over the years. Because they've seen so many tragedies here and well then cremated all the bodies, there is a lot of strange things that happen. Uh, for instance, the crypts over there. This is where they find a lot of the doors open and urns either scattered on the ground or perched mysteriously high up and other alcoves. And since the grounds were patrolled religiously by a cantankerous old caretaker named Jacob, who would shoot people with his shotgun full of rock salt, it seems unlikely it was done by people. Now, one of the most notable ghosts from here is an angry woman who they call the Wailing Widow. I know, it's kind of an old name, but this one's particularly angry, and word is, is that if she finds you on the grounds, she darts forward and thrusts her face into yours, and as her face explodes, she begins to scream at a pitch so high that it will shatter glass and people have reported permanent damage, hearing-wise, in any way. I'm also thinking damage to underwear, but that's just my personal theory. Now, one of the things that's most spooky about this place to me is the big experience I had with some girlfriends here. And obviously we were being stupid and teenagers and we traveled along and we thought, oh, we're gonna go up to the old city crematorium and see what happens, except for something actually did. You see, when we came up here on this beautiful smooth grass, which you can't see because it's night, we started walking along and all of a sudden, three holes opened up and all of us fell into them. I twisted my ankle pretty badly. Now, you're going, well, yeah, it's a place where they probably have a lot of bodies and it's just landscaping and who cares? Except for one thing, there were no holes there before we actually tripped and fell into them. And they were all muddy and wet and it was a bone dry August day. So that's my personal story. It scared the living crap out of me. We all jumped out of our holes and ran up screeching like barn owls, never to return again to the city crematorium.